Today I'm really excited to look at these watercolor paints from Target. It's the Mondo Llama. I bought these sets because I felt like they would be really kid friendly. And I have a lot of friends who have young kids and some of them have expressed interest in learning watercolor. A few of them have even taken my tutorials. It's so sweet. And they're showing me what they're working on. And so I wanted to be able to create tutorials that are specially for them. So if you have kids that might be interested in watercolor, keep watching because maybe this paint set will be the one for you. I wanted to offer a more upgraded version than the Crayola ones that most kids are familiar with. And it might be too expensive to invest in something that's higher end. So let's test out these kits and see what they're all about. Here's the product review for the Mandalama watercolor paint sets. Let me at least open them here on camera and then I will paint with them. So I'll start with this one first. This one is actually just $10 currently at Target. And let's open it up. Before I completely open it up, it does say that it comes with two brushes, a medium round and a small round. That's good. I usually prefer smaller brushes, especially for beginners. Then it comes with 32 colors. Wow, look at that. And it comes with paper. And that's really convenient because then you don't have to go out and buy additional paper. And because I'm keeping kids in mind, I want to be mindful of how accessible it is, how easy to use it is, and yeah, just all of those things. So I'm gonna try to pretend that I'm a kid again. <laughs> so anyway, it's out of the box now. And just first of all, yeah, all these colors just make me so happy. Oh my gosh. Go ahead and take off the plastic. Let's look at the watercolor pad first. It looks like it has 10 sheets and it's eight by 10. So it's a pretty decent size. For kids and even just beginners, I recommend starting out with smaller sheets of paper. Sometimes when the pages are too big, we feel this pressure to fill the entire page. And because these brushes are quite small, that's actually going to do a disservice to you because you're not gonna be able to paint really large things unless you're working in small sections at a time. So I feel like this size is is decent. I would go like five by seven. That's usually the size that I work with when I work with beginners in my workshops. And so if it's not too much of a hassle, I would probably recommend that parents cut this in half or at least put down like a piece of tape down the middle so that kids know not to cross that border and just work on one area at a time. But anyway, let's look at this. Okay, it looks like it's, uh, it's cold pressed paper. It looks like it definitely has some uh, texture to it. I'm kind of feeling it. It's a little bit rougher and there's like a lot of, there's a lot of striations. Sometimes when I see cold pressed paper, it's got like random, almost like a hammered metal look to it. But this one actually has like lines, like striations. So that's interesting. I've seen I've seen this kind of texture on other types of paper before too. So let's see how it will actually hold up with paint. Yeah, it feels pretty thick. And it doesn't actually say like 140 pounds or 300 GSM or anything like that. So I'm just gonna trust that it is actual watercolor paper. Okay, on to the palette. Really cute. It's very flat and skinny. Okay, let's see how easy it is to open. Hold on. Okay, it's actually kind of hard to open. <laughs> Unless I'm opening it wrong, what am I doing wrong here? Okay, so I guess if you know how to open it, then the next time it will be easier. Let's try it again. Okay, to be honest, it's still a little hard to open, even as an adult. And I feel like as a child, it's gonna be a little frustrating. So I wish there was just like an easy single clasp here in the middle instead of whatever's going on here. So I don't like that, but that's okay. All right, so let's go ahead and open it. So I don't know if you can use this um, you know, upper lid for mixing areas. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you can. It's just gonna be kind of annoying to clean up because these wells are not rounded. They're squared, they're, they're very angular. So it's gonna be a little harder to clean. So maybe the kids won't be mixing as much. I mean, when you have 32 colors, do you really need to mix? We'll see how the colors look on paper, but that's just at first glance. It just has like a white chalky, finish to it. All right, here are the brushes. They are quite small. I, If I were to compare it, maybe it would be, maybe the medium would be kind of like my round size three. 
it looks like it has more bristles than my round size three. And the smaller one looks more like a round size two. So this might be more like round size four, but the bristles just aren't long or as long as my size four. Uh, there's a couple bristles just kind of out of place. So I might have to cut it a little bit. That's okay. The brushes look pretty good. They look like they have enough bristles. So that's really important because I feel like a lot of kids art supplies, they really skimp out, um, especially on the hair bristles. So of course these are probably synthetic bristles, not actual animal hair, but yeah, they feel really good and soft and it looks like there's a lot of bristles too. I'll do the paint test and you know, swatches soon, but just at first glance, you know, it looks so pretty. It's nice that it comes with its own paper. I just don't like the open and close going on here. If you were to use this as a mixing well area, then you might have to wait until it's dry before you close it up, or you're gonna have to go in there and then you know, clean it out with paper towel or Q-tips or something. So yeah, those are just some initial thoughts. All right, so here's the other set. This was $20 and it comes with just the palette and 24 colors and two paintbrushes and its own palette. So basically the same thing as a $10 one, but just no paper. So I was wondering why this one was more expensive. And now I think it's because of this really pretty wooden box. So here we go, let's open it up. All right, this is really nice. It is unfinished wood. So the only thing I don't like about unfinished wood is that you can get tiny little splinters. And actually before I opened up the packaging, there was tiny little bits of stray wood sticking out. So I had to um, kind of like file it down a little bit. So just watch out for that. But otherwise it's a beautiful finish. I love this natural wood color. And this is probably gonna be a lot easier to open than the other one because it just has that single metal clasp here. So you just pop that open and then ta-da. Okay, so I like that a lot better. I feel like it's kid friendly to open and obviously adults can open it too. So let's go ahead and open that up. Beautiful, so it's got this palette. Oh, all right, so it's got this palette. I wonder if it's removable. It is. <laughs> so that's really great because then this is really easy to clean. If it was stuck inside this wooden box, that would not be a good idea. So I'm glad it is removable. And as you can see, it's got rounded wells. So it's, it'll be a lot easier to clean than that angular one in the $10 one. I like how it has slightly larger areas up here. And then these smaller ones here are actually angled downward. So I like palettes that are like that too. Let me just keep this out so that it doesn't pop out accidentally. I also like that they have this waxy paper on top of the paints to protect it. So that was just standing or sitting right here. I'm gonna remove that real quick. Okay, and then the colors are beautifully in there. I guess it is kind of hard because I wonder how this wood is going to change over time when you add water to it. Yeah, because it's not treated, I'm just afraid of like mold you know, could happen. I don't know, maybe you should spray it with some hydrogen peroxide every now and then. I don't even know if that's safe. So that's my only concern just right off the bat. I don't know if you can remove these paints. Let's see. Oh, you can. Oh, oh shoot. <laughs> okay, so you can remove the paints, although it's not in a very easy way. It looks like the div the wooden dividers, nope, they're not removable. <laughs> okay, never mind. But yeah, so they are kind of securely in there. They can't, if you were to flip the palette upside down, you can remove them, but yeah. So let's just see over time, you know, right now I can't tell. I'm just a little weary to like go in there with my spray paint and just start spritzing everywhere. So I think maybe the only other option is to maybe just use distilled water instead of regular tap water. So that's another option. So anyway, the colors look beautiful. It looks like, I don't know if this is the same amount of paint as you have in the $10 one, but these definitely don't have that chalky finish. So I wonder if there is a discernible difference in quality. But yeah, I really like the colors. Okay, let's take a look at the brushes. I think my cat wants to join us. Hi Sam. Hi, do you want to say hi? <laughs> hi. He's always so curious. Okay, well, he might be kind of wandering around. But anyway, here are the brushes. Oh, I do like how um, it comes with two different sizes. So it's got the flat brush and then a round brush. I don't know why it says medium bright. And this says small round. 
I mean, I get the size, but then if it's describing the shape, then it should be medium flat instead of medium bright. I don't, I don't understand that. But anyway, I like how the round brush came in the little cap. So just to protect it, um, I don't like how it actually pushed down on some of the bristles. So that's not cool. I might have to fix that or just clip them off. But this definitely looks a lot shorter than some of my brushes. This might be more like a size one or size two, but it seems to just be a little bit more rounder in the body part. And then the flat brush looks very similar to, it's a little bit wider than my, it's a little bit wider than my quarter inch, but it's not quite as, like this is my half inch, but it's not quite as wide as my half inch. So yeah, it's somewhere in between there. <laughs> so maybe it's more like a three eighths inch. I can already hear, can you guys hear that? Yeah, so I don't like how the ferrule, the little metal part is already kind of, yeah. So I think I just need to be very careful. So one of the tips that I give um, beginners and especially for kids is don't leave your brush in the water cup because over time it's going to ruin the wooden handle of your brush and then the water can also get inside this metal area and then affect the glue. So I'm just assuming that the glue isn't as, um, well, like when they stamped it, it probably didn't stamp like perfectly and then the glue also isn't on it isn't on properly. I think it's just manufacturer error. I don't think it's going to affect how this brush behaves, but I don't think that it's gonna last very long. So just watch out for that. If you see, you know, issues like this, so if you see some of these bristles sticking out, like I would just exchange this for a different set and just make sure that they don't have these errors. Cause again, I wanna make sure that even if your kids may only paint for a couple months, less, I don't know, that they still enjoy it and that there isn't anything wrong with the supplies that they're using. And for $20, you are getting a great value, but still, you don't want things that are gonna be frustrating you down the line. All right, so let's go ahead and see what these colors look like, how they look on paper, and whether I think that this would be a great set for kids. First, we'll look at the $10 set. And yeah, I'm really struggling to open this. Maybe it's a good thing that it's hard to open because then parents have to open it. But yeah, if the kids want to do it themselves, they really can't. <laughs> Finally, it's open. Here are the brushes. Here's the paper. I'm just going to rip off one sheet using my spray bottle to wet the paints. And here we go. I'm using the medium round brush first. And as I'm painting, I'm definitely seeing the chalky finish already and it hasn't even dried. I do feel like I have to work my brush in there a lot. And I don't know how this paint was made, but it seems to be absorbing the water really quickly. So even though I just sprayed it, I have to keep my brush really wet and then really work it in there in the paint. And sometimes even after that, I still have a hard time picking it up. Some colors seem to be easier to pick up than others, but in general, I'm finding that it is difficult to pick up the colors. So far though, for a kid's paint set, this is not that bad. This pink is really pretty. Reminds me of like a genuine rose. This second row of colors seem to be a little bit more pigmented. I'm really liking it. It looks slightly less chalky than the first row and the colors are fading out really nicely. This green reminds me of a thalo green. And this blue kind of looks like my cyan.
And this gray is kind of nice too. It's very grainy and chalky, but again, <laughs> I'm, I kind of expected that. Here's another kind of red. It's a little bit cooler than that very first row. I think it is helpful to have like all the rainbow colors because for kids, mixing is probably one of their weaknesses. And so it's great to get a wide range of all of the primary colors and even the secondary colors. Here's a nice earth toned color. It's not as bright as like a burnt sienna, but it's still really nice. Always good to have a pure black color, especially for kids so that they don't have to bother mixing black. All right, I feel like this last row has really nicely pigmented, at least out of the other rows. And they seem to be a lot thicker in colors or maybe I'm just getting better at picking up the colors, I'm not sure. And they seem to be slightly warmer toned. Like this green color reminds me of Hooker's Green Dark. This blue is almost like an ultramarine, but not quite. I feel like these browns are not quite what I'm expecting. I wish that it was a little bit more like a burnt umber or yeah, just a darker, deeper brown. All right, and you know what I'm gonna do first. I'm gonna paint leaves, so here we go. I'm still using that medium round brush and it's creating really nice points. It's bending and flexing really easily. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with how the brush is handling. Next, I wanted to try and see how the colors mix together and if I can use this lid. So I'm mixing some green and blue to make a teal kind of color and painting another set of leaves. Again, the brush is bending really nicely and because there's so many bristles, it's fanning out and making my leaves look really juicy and wide. It's really nice. I don't know if you can see the paper texture already showing through in the swatches and in the leaves. So I'm not a fan of the striation texture, but you know, again, it's not that big of a deal, especially when you're dealing with kids type of watercolors, but it is holding the paint and water really well. Next, let's paint some roses. I'm choosing a red, an orange, and a pinkish red. And I'm using the smaller brush now, the small round brush. Even this brush is handling really nicely, giving me nice thin lines as well as broad strokes. I like the variety of green so that I don't have to mix. And so I think for kids, it'll be really nice. And lastly, I wanted to fill the rest of the space with some abstract art. So I chose this light yellow ochre kind of color and just painting some general rectangles. Then I'm gonna overlay and let colors bleed and just see how they react on the paper. Overall, I am impressed with how pigmented some of these colors are. They're not as quote unquote creamy as I would consider my Lucas, but of course that's not a very fair comparison. So if I were to compare it to other more affordable watercolors that are more geared towards kids, this is definitely worth it for $10 when you get paper and brushes.
So I did notice that this purple here at the top the paint started separating so now you can see some of the pinkish granules too so again for ten dollars i think this is a great set but just know that they are a little bit chalky they're a little bit faded but i think it has a great color range especially for kids so that they don't have to mix ahead of time and in terms of pigmentation as long as your brush is you know, mostly dry with the wet paint, you'll get really nice strong colors. Okay, here we go with the $20 set. Comes in a nice wooden box, opens really easily with that metal clasp up at the front. It has a removable plastic palette. This waxy paper to protect your paints. You can set it aside for now. And it has 24 colors and two brushes, a small round and a small flat brush. So let's go ahead and swatch out these colors. I'm using the small round brush and I did not spray the palette. This is made from unfinished wood. So if I wet it, then over time it could create discoloration. There could be mold. So I just want to be careful. I'm just painting two circles per color, one, one at a darker value and one at a lighter value. And because I didn't spray the colors ahead of time, you'll see that I'm kind of working my brush in the paint a little bit more than I normally would. And that's because I'm only using the water that's on my brush. You'll also notice that the pans are not fixed to the palette. So even though they fit you know very snugly in that little column they're not affixed to the bottom so they are kind of jostling around a little bit so i don't know if this is the best palette for young kids because they might get frustrated that the pans are moving around and they might end up accidentally touching a different color because they're so close to each other so i would at first glance maybe recommend this palette to older elementary through high school and even just you know older adult beginners because we you would have the motor functions to you know not cont cross contaminate colors you would be able to not get frustrated easily with the pans moving around yeah and so i think the ten dollar palette is really great for really young kids and you know up to like maybe third or fourth grade as long as you don't mind that chalky color <laughs> As I'm swatching these colors, they're definitely not chalky. Like even the dried pan paints, they're, they don't look chalky at all either. So I'm really happy with how they're laying down on the paper. These are all the yellows and reds and pinks and purples in this first row. You can definitely see the paper texture, those lines I was talking about, showing through in these circles. So again, if you don't mind that kind of paper texture, then that's cool, but um, I just personally don't like it. But I can see that these paints are really nice and transparent, so yeah, <laughs> that's nice. All right, onto the greens, blues, earth colors, and grays and blacks. I didn't do a lift test for this palette either, but I, you know, perhaps I should just so I can see how staining these colors are and how transparent they are.
Okay, I don't know if it's because I'm blind, but this blue looks almost similar to the blue I just painted. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> This blue is pretty close to ultramarine, so that's always a good color to have. I don't know why this green is by itself over here, <laughs> but it kind of reminds me of sap green, but like a brighter yellowish sap green. This color is almost like a phthalo green, but the blue shade. I don't know what this color is going to be like, but at first glance it looks like a yellow ochre and I don't know why it's in this row. Maybe they meant it to be more like an earth color. And if so, I guess it's, you know, kind of hitting the mark. Okay, but then they have a blue color here, so yeah, it's just very confusing. <laughs> but this blue is pretty, it reminds me of like a Prussian blue. All right, three more colors to go. I'm assuming this is like a brown color. Yeah, this is nice. Again, I wish that they would offer at least two earth colors where one is a little bit more on the warm side and one on the cooler side. Here's the gray, looks slightly a warm shade. And last but not least, black. So yeah, I think these colors really do look nice. They don't look chalky at all. Next, I wanted to test out the flat brush. So I just picked up a blue color and I'm gonna do some mark making. I just wanted to see how well it holds, you know, the water, the paint, and whether the, the tip, you know, creates nice lines. Next, I'll paint a rose arrangement, of course. <laughs> I switch back to the smaller round brush. And these colors are, you know, laying down really nicely. I wouldn't say that they're, you know, super pigmented and bright. I do feel like there are a lot of fillers and additives to kind of stretch the color. I wouldn't say that they're, you know, creamy or rich at all. To be honest, they kind of remind me of like the pastel set I have from uh, Prima Marketing. Okay, let's paint some leaves. Oh, wow, this is a really bright green. <laughs> so I'm going to mix a olive green. So let's take that green, move it to one of the wells in the plastic palette. And then I'll add some of that brown, that third to the last color, to make a really nice olive green. And there we go. The flat brush is really great for painting leaves too. I'm really liking this. So I did get some paint on the wood, so I'm using the same flat brush but with some clean water to kind of fade that color out. So you do see like a wet discolored area. I mean, let's see how that looks, you know, over time. <laughs> and finally, let's end with some leaves, of course. I'm back to this small round brush and just finishing up the olive color that I mixed up. Again, I think this is a really great palette for beginners of all ages. Again, they can be younger kids too. 
And just as long as they're okay with, you know, the pans right next to each other. And speaking of pans, I think you can correct me if I'm wrong, but if these look like the same size as, you know, pan paints that you would find in student grade and artist grade paints. So that would be really cool to see if you can interchange them and create your own customized palette. So there you go. And then when you're all done, you can clean out your plastic palette, wait for your paints to dry, put the wax paper on top, and that's it. Great job. Thanks again so much for joining me in this video. I hope you found it informative. And if you do have kids, I hope you're excited for my new series of watercolor tutorials. I want it to kind of feel like a kid's show where there will be some interaction and engagement. And I hope that they will learn to fall in love with watercolor like I have. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to this channel, like this video, leave a comment because I'd love to hear from you. And I'll see you next time.